Welcome to the fourth episode of Star Wars Science, a series that looks at the gadgets and concepts found in Star Wars and applies them to the real world. The Death Star was a massive space station. It housed hundreds of thousands of crew members, had a giant super laser and a tractor beam to pull in enemy spacecraft. It was a battle station, a weapon of war, a big ball of fear floating in the vacuum of space. It could be maneuvered and positioned. It was an object of terror and destruction that our fearless heroes had to destroy. In real life, space stations have been a symbol of cooperation between nations and people of different backgrounds. Crew members orbiting above the Earth don't see battle boundaries, they see everything and everyone as connected. The mission of real space stations have been the opposite of the Death Star's mission. Partnership, not separation. Understanding, not intolerance. While the Cold War and the space race may have raised tensions, the purpose of space stations were not overtly to antagonize. They were for study. They were for research. They were there for a greater understanding of our place in the universe and how the human body and psyche could withstand the adversity of space exploration. The first ever space station was launched by the Soviet Union on April 19, 1971. It was called Salyut 1, which translates to salute 1. Two months after Salyut 1 was successfully put in orbit, the first manned mission to ever dock with the space station and have its crew of three board was a success. June 7, 1971. But as soon as they boarded, they had to quickly replace ventilation system parts because they encountered a smoky and burnt atmosphere inside of the station. Once this was fixed, the crew spent a total of 23 days in orbit on board the world's first space station. Unfortunately, space exploration is a dangerous dangerous and unpredictable task. When the capsule landed back on Earth, the recovery team found the crew dead. After an extensive investigation, it was concluded that the crew died due to capsule decompression. The first space station in the history of mankind only housed one crew. While it stayed in orbit for a total of 175 days, no one ever went back. On October 11th, the main engines were remotely fired for a de-orbit maneuver, and Salyut 1 purposefully burned up during re-entry over the Pacific Ocean. The Soviet Union attempted to put three more stations in orbit from 1972 to 1973. DOS-2 failed on the launch pad, Salyut 2 suffered an explosion three days into its mission, and Cosmos 557 failed to reach orbit and burned up in the atmosphere a week after launch. None of these missions were manned. On May 14, 1973, the United States launched Skylab. Skylab orbited the Earth from 1973 to 1979 with 34,981 total orbits. Three successful manned missions docked with the station, three crew members per mission, a total of nine visitors. When the first crew, SLM-1, boarded Skylab, they had to jump into action to make heavy repairs. Solar panel arrays were damaged during launch, depriving Skylab of most of its electrical power, which slowly made the station uninhabitable. Pete Conrad, Joseph Kerwin, and Paul Weitz were able to deploy a replacement heat shade, free the jammed solar panels, and save Skylab in temperatures of close to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Orbiting the Earth for an extensive period of time allowed the crews to conduct scientific experiments. The Earth Resources Experiment Package viewed the Earth with sensors to record visible, infrared, and microwave spectral regions. The existence of coronal holes in the sun were confirmed. Thousands of photographs were taken from a vantage point never seen. The effects of prolonged spaceflight on the human body were also studied. The astronauts even showered once a week but found the procedure difficult and weightlessness with the instrument that they had at the time. Skylab was the first step to figuring out physical fitness in space. A stationary bike and other equipment, while crude compared to the methods astronauts have today, gave a look at how future astronauts prevent muscle loss in a weightless environment. A total of 94 medical, optical, technological, scientific, operational, and even student experiments were conducted by the three crews. Due to budget restraints, additions to Skylab that were planned were canceled, as well as additional planned manned missions. Skylab remained in orbit until 1979, when NASA aimed the station to burn up over a relatively remote area near Cape Town, South Africa. 
The next major space station was Mir, launched on February 20th, 1986 by the Soviet Union. Mir was the first space station to be assembled in space. Slowly, modules were added between 1986 and 1996. Mir served as a microgravity research laboratory. Experiments were conducted in biology, physics, astronomy, meteorology, and overall spacecraft systems to fulfill a goal of learning more and developing technologies to permanently inhabit space. Mir was incredibly influential. It unlocked so many mysteries about human habitation in space. Mir remained in orbit until 2001, a little over 15 years. It saw the collapse of the Soviet Union and was then operated by the Russian Federal Space Agency. Valery Polyakov, a cosmonaut who lived on Mir, still holds the record for the longest single human spaceflight, 437 days and 18 hours, more than 14 months. Polyakov is one of the many heroes dedicated and devoted that can be found in human spaceflight. Space exploration is made up of a bunch of small steps, all walking towards a bigger goal. Mir is one of those steps. Its importance cannot be overlooked. Mir was deorbited in 2001 after funding for the project was cut. She re-entered the atmosphere, burning up, and falling into the South Pacific. The International Space Station was launched on November 20th, 1998. The ISS is the largest artificial body in orbit. You can actually see it with the naked eye from Earth, no kidding. I go out in my backyard and see it whenever it comes overhead. All you have to do is go to spotthestation.nasa.gov. Pick your location and it will tell you when and where to look. If you've ever been in a place with relatively low light pollution and have looked up, you've probably seen satellites orbiting overhead. Next time you have the opportunity, definitely look up. The International Space Station is brighter and bigger than the satellites you normally see. It's a solid, bright light that passes over your head in a matter of minutes. It's absolutely beautiful. The International Space Station is set up to test spacecraft systems, human abilities, and up-and-coming technology needed for future Mars missions. The ISS was slowly assembled from 1998 to 2011. Modules launch and were put together like Legos, adding new crew quarters, new experimental wings, new components, building upon itself more and more. Launching it all at once would be nearly impossible with the weight, so they assemble it slowly over time in space. The ISS is a joint program made up of five participating space agencies. Intergovernmental treaties establish ownership of the station. The ISS is a prime example of cooperation in space, working together for the common good, a common goal. The United States used to resupply and send up new components using the space shuttle, but the shuttle was decommissioned in 2011. And sadly, it has not been replaced by a new spacecraft. Currently, the International Space Station relies on the Russian Soyuz to keep it supplied and manned. NASA's budget is currently less than one half of 1% of the United States federal budget. Funding is tight. Without proper attention, it is feared that the United States' space program and scientific endeavors as a whole will suffer over time. The International Space Station shows what a shoestring budget can do when brilliant minds from around the globe put their heads together. When we study the cosmos, we study ourselves. I don't think you can put a price on unlocking a planet's imagination and furthering the progress of our species. We must explore. I barely scraped the surface of all of these accomplishments. There are countless documentaries and books that you can check out if you're interested in the subject. One of my all-time favorites is When We Left Earth. It's an easy and fun watch. It chronicles 50 years of space travel, from the Mercury program to the International Space Station. If you've never seen it, be sure to check it out. The universe is a big place. It is our destiny to unlock its secrets.